definitely want to talk about the title pictures as they evolved in the lead up to All Out. So we'll look ahead, look at them one by one, starting with the tag titles, uh, which the Young Bucks retained on the August 18th episode of Dynamite against Jurassic Express. Uh, it was a great match. Luchasaurus got a lot of pops from the crowd, but the story is that the Elite are constantly interfering in each other's matches, and it is the most blatant here with Kenny Omega handling handing the Bucks a chair and the Good Brothers just being a big nuisance. So much so that Luchasaurus has to focus on wiping all of them out, which leaves Jungle Boy alone in the ring to eat a BTE trigger and hand the wing over to the Bucks. Tony Khan is so peeved about this that later in the episode, he announces an admittedly very truncated tournament to determine who will challenge the Bucks for the title at All Out, and the match will be a steel cage match to prevent interference. A revelation that the Bucks take very badly, by the way. Um, see, I, I like this first match quite a bit, uh... But when I first heard about the steel cage with Tony Schiavone just saying, I got word from Tony that this is happening. Uh, I wasn't really feeling it. Uh, what did you think when you first heard that they announced this tournament and steel cage match at the same time? Um, I thought it made sense just because, you know, when you announce a steel cage, obviously the idea is to keep people out, right? So I think, oh, this there's so much interfering on the yeah, the elite and on the Bucks' behalf. It makes sense that there would be a stipulation that would keep the Good Brothers out. Because I don't see Gallows climbing a cage. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I think it made sense. You know, I, I get that somebody in a position of power who's angry would be like, hey, you know what? You're, we're going to have a tournament to see who the best team is that could beat the Young Bucks, essentially. Or at least could face the Young Bucks in a fair, in a vacuum, essentially, right? So I think it kind of made sense. Um uh, from my perspective, yeah. A tournament that didn't include FTR, Santana and Ortiz. Well, wasn't FTR, um, or wasn't, who is it, Hardwood or the Wheeler. other guy? Yeah, he, he was dealing with an injury, right? Like, pretty oh, nasty. Oh, you know what? Uh, Maybe that was when he was dealing with yeah, the injury. He, yeah, he had a really nasty spot that I won't even describe. <laughs> that was so gross. Um, Oof, that was rough. Yeah, that was really tough. But I think he was out of action, so that probably got them out of it. And I think, uh... Who was the other team you mentioned? Uh, Santana Ortiz. Um, they didn't have an yeah, injury. Yeah, Santana Ortiz. No, they didn't. But I think, I, I guess just because they were in a program with FTR, it kind of precluded them from being. I get what you're, I get your point, though. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, it, it it was a very limited tournament of like four teams. So <laughs> well, whatever it may have thought about the tournament when it was first announced, it proved to be one of the best things during these weeks of television. Uh, Private Party and Jurassic Express face off in the first match of the tournament on the August 12th episode of Rampage, and they had a great match as well. Uh, it's kind of easy to forget that Private Party came into AEW as the hottest new talent at the company, and they prove it once again here as Jungle Boy and Isaiah Cassie light it up for the first few minutes to the delight of the crowd. There's lots of flips, lots of smooth transitions between moves for a very awesome opening salvo of offense. And even when Cassie tags in Quinn, Jungle Boy manages to overcome them with some impressive moves and extraordinary rope work. Private Party eventually start to gain some momentum with Matt Hardy helping on the sidelines, but he's eventually disposed of by Jungle Boy. And when Private Party set up for the gin and juice, Jungle Boy somehow reversed it into a swinging DDT mid-move, which effectively put Cassie out of the match, leaving Quinn to fend for himself. Uh, you know, he does his best, but few can stand up to a dinosaur one-on-one, -on -one. and Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy land a Thoracic Express on Mark Quinn to get the pin, winning the match and advancing in the tag tournament. Uh, I was actually surprised as I thought that Jurassic Express would be knocked out early since they just got a title shot, but, you know, honestly, with what happened next, it makes sense, and them in the later matches would definitely be more of a marquee match than Private Party. And, you know, I, I think that Private Party lost something when they joined up with Matt Hardy. And despite their immense wow. skill level, they just don't feel as exciting to watch as they did before they went to the dark side. Yeah, it would be cool to see them kind of split off from Hardy. And maybe even, maybe even you can have like a, you know, a blow off feud between Hardy and, and Private Party. Um, but yeah, I, I think I agree with you. Um, you know, it, it, it seemed like they weren't... Um, it seemed like Jurassic Express, maybe they had just gotten shots. Maybe they weren't going to get another shot. But I think they're the hotter hand right now. So I think that's what Tony Khan and AEW went with. I, it would help a lot if uh, Private Party would just go back to their old outfits. Mm-hmm. Like, I, yeah, most definitely. I don't get the sense that Matt Hardy is a heel in the sense that he wants to control them. Like, he wants their money, he wants their business, but he doesn't seem like a, a guy who would, like, tell him, No, you must wear the khakis! Who has uniforms, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally get what you mean. Um, yeah, it is kind of like... You know the, you know the stable uh, from the Attitude Era, Right to Censor? 
Oh God, who is it? Who's about? in that? It was um, Val Venus was in it at some point. The Godfather was in it at some point. The God, they yeah, just... that was the one because it was like they took the guy who had like a pimp yeah, gimmick and, and made, made him, him into the Good Father. The good father. Yeah. So it seems it feels a little bit like that, where it's like, okay, you're part of the stable. This is what you're gonna wear. You're gonna wear. <laughs> it's just like, all right, come on, you know. So I totally agree with you. The next match in the tournament was the Lucha Brothers versus Varsity Blondes on the August 25th episode of Dynamite, and it was another great match. The Varsity Blondes are easily one of my favorite up-and-coming groups, so putting them up against the Lucha Brothers was exactly the kind of exposure they needed to continue their upward momentum. Garrison in particular looked great as his gangly physique uh, belies a very agile and tough customer, one that even Ray Phoenix had trouble overcoming at the start of the match. For the most part, though, it's Pillman in the match as he and Penta spend a lot of time feeling each other out, and trading devastating moves back and forth uh goes on for a bit uh they tag in garrison and penta ends up getting garrison on the apron to land a packaged pile driver Ugh, that's never fun uh but pillman oh. then lands a springboard kick that sends him to the ground uh the victory is short-lived however as phoenix drags pillman out of the ring and the bros give the blondes super kicks before phoenix lands a big suicide dive on the two of them the blondes try to rally and pillman catches phoenix in a springboard ddt to land a power bomb which is awesome uh but it only gets a two count and a springboard elbow strike from garrison only gets a two count as well garrison needs a super kick from penta that sends him out of the ring and the bros throw a super kick party for pillman followed by an assisted pile driver to get the pin um, so yeah, I like this match a bit. Um, I've heard some people criticize the Varsity Blondes in it, but I thought they did just fine. Garrison, I, I don't know if he did it this match. I'm trying to remember, but I love when he does that really weird, like, big step running thing through the corners. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they, they're a great duo, and I want to see more of them. It looks like we're going to see some more of them with the more recent episodes. But yeah, I thought this was a great match. I'm all in on the Varsity Blondes. I mean, I think uh, I think the Lucha Bros have, you know, from the start, they've been a known commodity from people who've, who've watched them before. Um, I really like the Varsity Blondes. Uh, I think they've got a great look. I think they're really good wrestlers and exciting wrestlers, and they're young, and they're only going to get better. So, uh, you know, I'm all in on the Varsity Blondes, and I think putting them up against, you know, experienced wrestlers like the Lucha Bros is only going to make them look better and better. So I'm excited to see them go up against you know ha- have long programs with teams you know i would love to see them go against the veteran team of ftr for example and just see what they can do kind of the f- the the flips versus the fists right so um i don't know i'm all in i i really like the varsity blondes a lot and i think this was a really good match Heck, just give them another ti- give them a title shot against the lucha bros just do that rematch yeah exactly i would love to see that uh, so with that victory, the final match of the tournament is on the April 27th episode of Rampage between Jurassic Express and the Lucha Brothers. It'd almost be redundant to say that both of these teams had a fantastic match here, but dang was this match awesome. Jungle Boy and Ray start things off with some great athleticism between the two with uh, this one Cazador into an arm drag from Jungle Boy that looked like wizardry and this great spot from Ray, which was, <laughs> you know, it was admittedly a little convoluted, but still very cool to see. Um... For whatever reason, he's walking on the ropes in Jurassic Express's corner, uh, which I think would be the last place you'd want to be, and sure enough, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus try to shove him off. Of course, Ray Phoenix, being a wizard himself, bounces off the ropes, instead of, and instead of tumbling over, is right side up again, and lands a kick and a flipping arm drag. He's showing off a bit, sure, still awesome anyway, absolutely. Yeah, Ray Phoenix is so cool. I mean, obviously, both of them are so cool, Penta and, and Ray Phoenix, but, I mean, the things that Ray Phoenix especially does is, um, if I was a wrestler, I'd want to be Ray Phoenix. I think, <laughs> you know, um, just so cool, and I love the show-off aspect, and I'm, I just... I love Ray Phoenix, and I love this match in general. Jungle Boy tries to go for the snare trap to end things quickly, but Phoenix rolls out of it, and both guys tag their respective partners in, which gives us Luchasaurus versus Penta for a bit, and I don't know how to phrase this exactly, but Penta's got a strong presence to him that's both very hammy and extremely menacing. Like, his slow Mm. walk followed by taking off his glove is over the top, but it also belies a confidence that his opponent can't do anything to stop him, and even when they try, they regret it immediately. Luchasaurus learns his first hand when he grabs his hand mid Zero Miedo, and Penta just destroys his left leg with a series of kicks. Luchasaurus uh, recovers pretty quickly, though, and goes for the throat, which prompts Phoenix to come in with a top rope kick that looks like something out of a Jackie Chan movie, and the whole thing descends into chaos at that point. Um, Now, I'm not going to go over every move 
you know, because this was amazing from start to finish, and we could talk about every single thing that happened, but we're just going to get through it. Um, there's a spot where Jungle Boy finally locks in the snare trap on Phoenix right in the middle of the ring, and Penta runs in to break up the hold. Okay, this is one spot I was kind of iffy on. Instead of just jumping on him to break it up, Penta hauls back and give, gives Jungle Boy a freaking goalie kick right into the skull. Now, I watch it again, and Penta does slap the leg, so that terrifying crunching sound was not due to direct contact. But I still couldn't tell you if he actually kicked him or not. And I wouldn't think a swift kick to the temple is in Jungle Boy's best interest. No. That, yeah, that was a particularly uh, nasty spot. And, yeah, I mean, I think you nailed, <laughs> you nailed it. It was it was just a nasty, nasty-looking spot. Uh, even even when you notice the leg slapping, even when you notice, you know, this or that. Uh, kick, getting kicked in the temple kind of uh, is, is not in anyone's best interest. The match goes on for a few minutes after that until Luchasaurus tags in and immediately eats a Hurricane Rana, which is enough to keep him down for quite a while, which gives the Lucha Brothers enough time to finish off Jungle Boy with a Canadian Destroyer on the apron. You know, if the uh, goalie kick wasn't enough. Right. <laughs> Luchasaurus is all alone now and eats a bunch of super kicks from both guys and... They do this sort of, I guess, half Canadian destroyer thing, which leads to a pin where both guys were on top of Luchasaurus. Not sure why the ref even bothered counting that, because there's no way that's a legal pin. Uh, but Luchasaurus kicks out anyway, and the Lucha Brothers follow up with an assisted pile driver, and that's final enough to keep them down for the three count, where only one of them goes for the pin, and the Lucha <laughs> Brothers win the match and will face the Young Bucks at the pay-per-view. Um, so yeah, a, a fantastic end to a pretty amazing tournament that was... Almost, you know, they had no time to make it work, but they made it work. And yeah. it's impressive what they were able to do in just two weeks. Uh, there was one more match on the September 5th episode of Dynamite with Jurassic Express and Lucha Brothers facing off against the Young Bucks and the Good Brothers in an eight-man tag match. But we'll get to that a bit more when we're talking about the world title picture. What did you think about the tournament? You know, they, they got through it pretty well in the short time they had. Um, but do you think they should have thought this out a little bit longer maybe made it eight per 18 tournament instead of a 14 potentially i mean i think i think they just used how many kind of weeks they had left and just did the math and they're like you know what these are the teams we've got these are the teams we want in let's just do it this way um i do think that the teams you know obviously we've mentioned ftr and santana and ortiz weren't in it um, I think there are definitely teams that were left out that could have been a good addition. I honestly just have a feeling they were like, okay, how do? what are we going to do for the tag matches? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what are we going to do for the tag title? And then uh, they're like, okay, we could do like a, what was it, like a four-team tournament, right? So um, I, I, I feel like it might have been a little rushed. But, I mean, the matches themselves kind of made up for it, I think. Um, I think they bailed out creative there and... You know, there were there were definitely at least two really, really good matches. And I, I, I enjoyed all of them. It was really. definitely an in-case-of-emergency break-glass situation. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I think it, it was the case. Yeah. <laughs> 